Welcome everyone to this example number six maybe, I'm not sure, but whether to repot or not your orchid without actually having to go and check the roots or if you have opaque pots like I do, you cannot look through the pot to check the status of your roots. This is Sologeny pandorata, I've already addressed another example about the health and climate of the pot and how I go about assessing whether an orchid needs to be repotted or not. So, here's another example, something that was brought to my attention by Michael McCarthy, and yes, I am going to go through with it, but I'm going to film it, document it, and then we're going to have a little bit of an analysis whether the pH of plain RO water after a two-hour soak will be able to give us a clue as to how the root system is doing in the pot. So what's going to happen here now, as per Michael's comments, is... We're going to flush this pot through with plain RO water. Normally, I do my pre-soaks using CalMag and seaweed. That's not going to happen today because if I use CalMag and seaweed, then I'm going to have to drop the pH level so that the orchid can absorb CalMag and seaweed. So a good flush through the pot with just plain RO water as if it were flushing day, letting that drain out. Obviously, this video will be in three phases. This is the first phase, putting the pot into plain RO water for a soak of about an hour or two. The second phase being measuring the pH of the water in the pot after one or two hours. The third part will be unpotting the orchid and seeing whether the pH reading is correct as to what is happening in the pot and the state of the root. So, here we have my plain RO water as it comes out of the faucet straight into a glass measuring the pH it's 8.4 that for me is normal because my typical mains water has a pH of about 10.5 and up so I will not be getting a 7 pH I do the pH down with all of my applications of supplements for example my fertilizer drops my pH to the ideal level that I want for a specific day so all that is under control but it is important to note that this is the pH of what is going to go into the pot right now to fill up the pot with this water we've registered the pH and now we wait and see two hours I am going to give it two hours because to unpot this orchid I need shade otherwise I'm going to burn the leaves so we have our reading we'll take a mental note of that and well the powers of editing being as they may I'll see you just now did you enjoy that jacuzzi ma'am <laughs> right it's been a little bit more than two hours as I was waiting for the shade, but let's see what results this pot has when it comes to the pH levels. We started off with 8.3. Let's drain my orchid and then check the pH. I'm going to try and stay systematic here because I'm excited to see the result. I am sorry if you can't see the display. I do apologize. It started off with 8.3, trying to get the reflection out of the display. If you can't see it, then I'm going to comment. It started with 8.3 and slowly went down to 8.1. Then it dipped to 7.6. We're at 7.4 now, 7.3. <laughs> this is like reading out the bingo numbers. So the idea about this being is whether to recognize if the roots in the pot are viable if there is a lot of decay in the pot, then the pH would dip because the pot is more acidic. If the pH had maintained its value at 8.3, even if it had risen a little bit, that would be a result of the lecker. It is steadying out now at 7.1. It's about 30 seconds in that solution now, 7.1. All right, if the theories are correct, there is decay in the pot which is also to be expected because the orchid has been in the pot for over two years. That is one of the reasons why we're repotting, not just because the growth is so close to the edge. But we've got a steady seven now. There's another theory I'm going to add to this, is the fact that I have always, always reduced my pH that goes into the pot to about 6.3, sometimes 5.8, based on what nutrients, what supplements I was targeting in the fertilizing or the supplement application process. My LECA is stored in the water that we saw earlier at 8 pH. I always round it off like that. And after a little over two years, 
It could be that my pH down, my adjustments, have also changed the climate in the pot. So this is where I'm getting at when it comes to, over a period of time, the lecker will take on the pH of the environment in the pot and discard what it was stored in, adjusting itself naturally. We've reached 6.9. So two factors. I drop my pH when it goes into the reservoir as part of my supplement and fertilizing applications. And another thing is decayed root matter, which is to be expected after two years. So let's unpot the orchid and see what we've got. I have my hammer in case I need it. As the structures are so tough, I'm gonna risk just seeing if I can pull her out. She's not tightly packed in here. The only resistance that would probably be the case here is the microfiber. Here we go. She's coming out. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. All right, so check this out. There is not much death in this root ball. That's pretty amazing. So I'm going to draw the conclusion that the drop in the pH when it came to the soaking, the water that was left, that is a definite indicator of the fact that having for years and years had the pH adjusted, the LECA has taken on the characteristic of the pH that normally goes in and has balanced itself out. Something I do talk about a lot when I talk about fertilizing and supplementing and why I put pH into the pot the way I do, the fact that from the reservoir, wicking up, the pH will change and adjust and raise itself. So if I go in with 5.8 pH in the reservoir, I anticipate that throughout the process of the wicking, my pH will rise because my leka was stored in a pH of 8. I hope that makes sense. So over two and a half years, I can say, well, the reason the pH sank is because the LECA has been in a lower pH environment all this time. So thank you very, very much for watching. I'm going to leave it here for this video. Now I will get on to cleaning that root ball and do that in a separate video because this is going to take a while. If you would like to see that cleanup video, there is also going to be a story of my memories of Africa included in that video because I don't have to do much thinking when I see a root ball like this. I will link that video in the description. I hope that you found this interesting. Pretty much, I've got my conclusion here. The decay was minimal, which is awesome. So we have work to do. See you hopefully in the next video when we repot this orchid. And I'm going to take you on a journey from my school all the way up to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.